So I've asked a, a great question. Um, I've done a lot of videos using the mug analogy, being the observer of the mug. But how do you do that in everyday life? <clears throat> I think the great thing with, there's a few things. One is like my teacher is uh, Muji and he's got a lot of videos on YouTube which you can watch. I have a lot of uh, videos on YouTube. If you go into my YouTube channel and um, uh, go into the search bar on my YouTube channel and put uh, Observer, Observer, and you get all my videos on the Observer. So you can watch a few of those and that will help you to get into the Observer. So you want to master being in the Observer in a room alone. You want to be able to be the observer of your body, your thoughts, uh, your feelings in your room alone. Then how do you master it through the day? So once you're, like let's say I'm in my room and then I experience being the observer of my thoughts, my body, everything. So there's this detached witnessing and I detach from the story in my, in my head, detach from the body and there's this clear observing. Next thing to do is to practice walking around the house in the observer. Can you stand up and still be in the observer as you're standing up? Can you walk to the bathroom? Can you go to the kitchen and make your breakfast? Practice that in the observer. Now, each time you go through a new phase, you have to go through a learning curve of being in the observer while you're walking. So it's, it's easiest to do it in the observer sitting alone, sitting down watching a video, then you practice. As you wake up, you might identify with the body. You might get hooked into the body. Or you might start thinking as you start walking because it's habitual to identify as you stand up. So then you have to practice being the observer as you're standing up and as you start to think, be the observer. So eventually you can stand up and walk around and still retain the observer in the house alone. Then you, you know, practice being the observer on, on the journey to work. Now this gets really, when you're starting to speak to people and doing work, that's more advanced. So if you can master the simple observers, then as soon as you, like, for example, start to, start to do work, you might start thinking and get reattached to your thoughts as you're doing. It depends what type of work you're doing. So then you want to start going back to the observer and see if you can work in the observer. Like, you know, everyone can probably make a cup of tea in the observer quite easily. But then as you start to write, can you be in the observer as you're writing? So you've got to practice this. When people start to speak to you in the beginning, that's quite complicated. So it's like, oh, you'll start to go into your head trying to formulate an answer to what they're saying. But eventually, I would start with your friends, like speaking to family, speaking to friends, and practice being in the observer, speaking to your friends. Um, and then, so it doesn't really matter if you're not fluent or you're not eloquent or you're going in and out of the observer with your friends. And then when you can master being in the observer with your friends, uh, then you can try, you know, it's easier to try and do that in work, in, uh, in a work situation. You know, being the observer of that. So you may get, in difficult situations, you may get what I call certain thoughts that come up which pull you back into the head. Like, if I'm not eloquent, I'll lose my job. But you still have to, like, you have, you have to like purify those thoughts by keep going to the observer. As you still keep going to the observer of these thoughts in what I call, the ego has certain situations where it thinks are more important than others. But actually, you can be in the observer in a work situation, uh, but you want to practice it, you know, practice it being in your home alone, practicing being in the park, practicing uh, being in the observer with your friends, and then you're practicing it in these more charged environments at work. So you'll gradually be able to, to do that at work, you know, it'll, you know, and you can practice that. So that's how I would do it. Because like here, you can you experience the observer here, because you're not in your head. So the next, then you have to go to the next stage up. Can you practice the observer when you leave here? Walk to the tube station. Can you be in the observer as you're speaking to your friend? Then the ego tends to get more attached in charged situations, like you know, if it's money, or you could lose your you lose your income. But then you have to practice that. So it's a it's a letting go. It's a letting go, and you know, and uh, as you do that, anyway, as you keep practicing the observer, your level of consciousness will go up. Also, your attraction to certain environments, people, places, and situations may change. 
you know, if you keep going to the observer while you're watching gangster rap music, you may, you may eventually not like gangster rap music so much. You may start to want to be more in classical music, you know, or um, so. The thing with addiction, I come from an addiction background. Um, in addiction, um, you feel bad and then you do something addictive and you feel good. That's the thing. But as you keep doing the observer, um, you start to go to a high level of consciousness. So the need to do things to get an addictive hit gets less and less. So you don't need to do them so much. So all, all enlightened teachers say there's nothing they need or what, because they're already in a place they're already in a beautiful place. They don't need to do. They don't need to take drugs or have a donut. It's, they're not, there's not that urge to do it because they're already in a good place, you see. But when you're too much in your thinking and too identified with things, you're in a low place and then you, th you want to do things which are more addictive. Also, as you go into the observer, you'll find that life will flow more. Like when you're in the observer, you might find all the buses and the tubes arriving on time and a feeling of safety, like everything will be okay. So as that happens, when you get this experience, when you start to get the experience of trusting in the universe, if you like, things generally do work out well, and your choices seem to, to work out okay in that. So when you start to go in fear, that things start to get more difficult. So that, that's the thing, but it's, it's great to practice it. Practice it on the easy stuff in the beginning, and then as you trust it in the easy stuff, you may feel you want to try it, you know. Obviously, if you're like uh, in a job, in the beginning it may affect your performance because, you know, in the ego, the ego is doing things. If you go into the observer, you're detaching. Like when I, when I first started doing the observer, you have to keep doing the observer and then eventually the observer happens on autopilot. But it takes time and there's a transition period, you know. So you can, you can speak and be in the observer you can make coffee and be an observer, you know, and various things, you sort of you sort of let them go. If the ego finds special significance in something, uh, until you clear that specialness, uh, it's hard to let it go because the ego thinks, you know, its survival is based on being attached. Like you think, like if say, say I was in a job, you know, if I thought that the job was required for survival, then I'd find it hard to be an observer. So I keep going into the observer. At a certain point, I might find, as I start to clear that fear and that those thoughts, like I need the job to pay the rent, then as I start to go up in consciousness, it suddenly comes in, oh, it'll come to me at a certain point, oh, if I lose the job, I'll just get another job, you see. But if I get attached, too attached, it'll be if I lose that job, then it'll be death. You know, I'll never get another job, and uh, so you can't, you can't leave, you can't... I can't safely go into the observer because it'll be like life and death to keep into in, in my ego. I find that, you know, like when I'm in deep fear, I have to stay attached because I think it'll be like life and death. But when I get into the observer, then you start to get con thoughts from a higher level of consciousness. It's like, oh, well, when that job goes, I just get another job. So you know, it's not a big deal, you see. And then you can, when I have no fear in a situation, it's easy to be the observer. So like I'm, I'm chilled out, I'm doing my work. And that, that thought can't pull me up, like, oh, the boss might suddenly come up to me and say you're fired. Which is usually the big thing in the job, you know, like, oh, you get fired. So that's the thing that will be. And if you transcend the job, then you're okay whether you get fired or not, you see. Oh, it's okay, I've got a month's rent already in the bank. I'm sure I can get another job within a month. So then you can be safely in the observer, because you know you can handle it. Uh, unless you can't handle it, in which case you're attached, you see, then you won't safely go to the observer.